Levi Lincoln of Massachusetts was a Harvard graduate, but she studied law with Joseph Hawley. Joseph Hawley is not a name you hear a lot nowadays, but he was an important early Boston radical, uh, but a higher level radical, well-educated, uh, friends, very good friends with John Adams. Radical. So, uh, as radical as the elites got in Boston at that time. Uh, Levi studies under Hawley. Uh, he actually joins the Minutemen, and when the call goes out for the Battle of Lexington and Concord, Levi Lincoln runs out and participates in the Battle of Lexington and Concord, which of all the rebels that end up getting involved very quickly, there's not actually that many people who are actually at Lexington and Concord. Now, Lincoln only serves for a few days and decides he's more of a man of books than of weapons, uh, and he goes instead because uh, the war had broken out just as Lincoln had gotten his law degree. So he does go for that fight, but he ends up moving to Worcester, Massachusetts, where he establishes a law practice and becomes really the only lawyer in town. Many of the lawyers had fled the area because, well, they were loyalists <laughs> and they didn't want to stick around for whatever these patriots were going to do. So Levi Lincoln filled that void, uh, but he also starts helping in public positions with the patriots. And by 1779, he's chosen to help draft what becomes Massachusetts' first constitution. It is the second one written and the second one put up for ratification, but the first one that's actually passed and ratified. And Levi Lincoln helps, uh, serves on the committee that creates that. He wasn't a major role in it, but he was there. Now, uh, he is, in, he spends about the next two decades in the local state government, helping run Massachusetts. He runs for United States Congress on several occasions, but keeps losing and keeps losing until 1801 when he is actually finally elected to Congress. Now, this doesn't last very long because he shows up in December and by March, Thomas Jefferson comes a knocking and says, hey, I'm president now. How would you like to be the fourth attorney general of the United States of America? And Levi Lincoln is like, well, I've been trying to become a congressman for over a decade, but you know what? I'll do it. And he goes and he serves as attorney general uh, through the entirety of the fir uh, uh, Jefferson's first term as president. Now, there are a lot of interesting things that happen along the way for Levi Lincoln. Most notable is the participation in Marbury versus Madison. Marbury versus Madison is one of the most important court cases in American history, the result of which is John Marshall and the Supreme Court decided they have the power of judicial review which means the Supreme Court gets to determine if a law is constitutional or not. Now, the background of this story essentially is John Adams, on his way out of the presidency, appointed a bunch of midnight justices. At the last minute, he said, I'm going to name a bunch of new judges and pack Federalists into the court just to screw my old buddy Jeff. And, uh, well, Jefferson doesn't love this. So he, the thing is, you had to have a commission, just like in the military. So if you were a judge, you'd have to have a commission written out uh, by Congress, approved by Congress, and then signed by the president and handed to you. And the person whose job it was to hand you your commission as judge was the Secretary of State. So Thomas Jefferson writes to James Madison and says, don't give them their commissions. Just don't give it to them and they can never have the position. Uh, side note, Levi Lincoln showed up before James Madison, and James Madison was a little sick, so he gets there a few weeks late, and Levi Lincoln unofficially acts as Secretary of State for a few weeks while waiting Madison as acting Secretary of State. He doesn't really count as a Secretary of State, but he was the first one who didn't deliver the commissions. Then Madison shows up to also take responsibility for not delivering the commissions. Either way, one of the gentlemen, uh, a, a Justice Marbury, sues the federal government for this. I want my commission. And this goes to the Supreme Court, and this is a very important case. But what's really interesting about Lincoln is Levi Lincoln is called to the stand as Attorney General of the United States to testify in front of uh, uh, the Supreme Court. Even more interestingly is the man he replaced, Charles Lee, not General Charles Lee, Charles Lee of the Virginia dynasty, Charles Lee, who was the former Attorney General under John Adams. So you have a former attorney general questioning the current attorney general on the Supreme, in front of the Supreme Court. Now, uh, unfortunately, in this case, uh, I, if, um, 
this is the only time I'm aware of that you have one attorney general questioning another one. Uh, the as I said, the end result of that case is that uh, the justices give themselves right of judicial review. Basically, say you have to deliver the commissions, but by that point they were already reorganizing, as I was stating earlier, under the Judiciary Act of 1781. I believe is the year that the Judiciary Act came out. So. After four years, the entire first term of Jefferson's administration, Levi Lincoln does a whole bunch of stuff. He also, I, I should note this, while the, I, I didn't put it in the article, but while they were debating the Louisiana Purchase, Levi Lincoln said, well, can we just have one of the existing states make the purchase since it's unconstitutional for the federal government to do, but the technically the independent states could make purchases? Maybe we just have one of the states make it. Now, that, they didn't go in that direction, but I thought that was really curious when I read that. Uh, Lincoln, after four years in office, leaves. He doesn't want to stick around for the second term. He's had enough of Washington. He goes back to Massachusetts. Um, he ends up running for governor on several occasions. He becomes lieutenant governor for two terms. He spends several years as lieutenant governor. Uh, he he does serve as acting governor for several months, but he he loses his bids for governor of Massachusetts. But, you know, he was lieutenant governor for quite a while. Um, he And he actually, at the end of his life, his old friend from the Jefferson administration, James Madison, uh, uh, appoints him at, or, or nominates him to sit as an associate justice of the United States Supreme Court. But Levi Lincoln at the time having failing health, and, and what I read is his eyesight was going and it was getting harder for him to read, which he would need to do be, to be a justice. Uh, Levi Lincoln turn, declines the opportunity to be on the United States Supreme Court. So that is a brief overview of what I think is the fascinating life of Levi Lincoln senior the fourth united states attorney general i'd have to throw the senior in there because his son would end up to go on to do a lot in the second generation of american political leaders